The Monerotopia guest segment is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. How's it going? Hey, Zeno. How's it going, man? Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. I, um, I actually DM'd Doug yesterday, and he's like, oh, we'll throw you on tomorrow. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> let's do it. But uh, thank you. That's, uh, how, we, that's yeah. how we roll around here, man. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. I was like, that's oh, okay. I appreciate the last so. minute jumping on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Uh, yeah, why don't you? Why don't you? I think I'm a little delayed here, and I apologize. We'll have Tux ru- basically run the interview. Um, but yeah, if you want to start by giving a little intro about yourself, obviously, I don't think you want to reveal too much. But whatever it is you want to say about yourself with regards to your relationship with Monero, and then we can get into the project that you're working on. Yeah, I mean, I'm a longtime uh, community member. Um, I've been involved with a lot of different things with Monero. And yeah, recently I've um, created this new series called Attack of the Poison Outputs. And the goal here is to reboot Breaking Monero. Uh, Breaking Monero was made actually back in 2018, uh, which in crypto years is a long time. <laughs> it's like six years, right? That's, that's like 30 years in crypto. And so a lot of things have changed over the past six years. And my goal is to highlight that and to really illustrate um, how Monero can be attacked. And uh, the goal here is to improve Monero and to kind of spread awareness as to how Monero should improve. Um, Obviously, full chain membership proofs are on the agenda, which is fantastic. But still, Monero can be attacked even with full chain membership proofs. Totally, totally. Yeah, it is crazy to think about how long it has been since breaking Monero came out. You're right. That's in crypto. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of the yeah, information I'm... is still super useful and a lot of it still applies today, but some of it's definitely, I guess, air quote, outdated according to how some of the privacy features of Monero has been updated. And it'll certainly become out, outdated when full chain membership proofs replaces ring signatures. So. Yeah. And like the thing is, um, <laughs> when breaking Monero was made, Monero was not used on darknet markets. That's how long ago it was. Wow. Um yeah, like in fact, um, I think the last episode was sometime in like early 2019, um, and White House Market, which was the first Monero market, that um, launched in August of 2019. So it was it was long after um, that series had been released. So a lot of things have changed. Uh, most notably, coin swap services. This is like the new meta of what's going on. Um, with how to acquire Monero. Um, but there's also, you know, a lot of other things like we have atomic swaps now. That didn't exist back, you know, back in 2019. Um, Monero mm-hmm. is completely different now. Yeah, that's very true. Um, so Zito, I, I think I don't know that much about you, but you want to go ahead and give a little bit of an introduction to yourself, maybe a little bit of a backstory, why, why how you got to Monero. I, I think you're maybe more of an OG person. Uh, you seem to be one of the larger individuals that I noticed when I first got to this community uh, a year and a half ago. But yeah, go ahead and just give a little information about yourself. You don't have to go in depth if you do, you know stay as anon as you want to. But if you have like a story you want to give about how you got to Monero, feel free to do that. Yeah, um, I guess I, I first got into cryptocurrency um, because I wanted to bet on a UFC fight. And at the time, um, betting was illegal in America. <laughs> it's totally different now. I mean, like, I mean, if you turn on the um, any any like sports programming, you'll see like betting commercials like it's crazy now. But at the time, betting was illegal. So I then found out, oh, I can bet with Bitcoin. So I bought Bitcoin and and that's how I started using crypto. And then as time passed, I, um, you know, learned more about Bitcoin and I was like fascinated by it. Um, however, I was like very turned off by the uh, Bitcoin community because um, they were not cypherpunks, I guess is the best way to put it. Like they just wanted to get rich. And shortly thereafter, I discovered Monero and I was like, oh, this is this is based like this is really cool. 
And through that, I then really got into privacy and I started like really being mindful of OPSEC. And uh, yeah, as time passed, um, yeah, I guess I'm like kind of like an influencer now in Monero, which is weird. <laughs> like that wasn't planned. Um, you know, I, I see people like retweet me a lot and stuff. I don't really spend much time on social media, but that's really cool. And um, yeah, I guess now um, I, I'm I'm like trying to expand and like you know make uh, make a project that you know gives back to the community with uh, this attack of the poison outputs, which I think um, a lot of people are really going to like. And I think a lot of people are going to learn a lot because, uh, and I've witnessed this, a lot of people don't really understand how Monero works uh, like under the hood. And so I want to like help people, you know, understand that. Yeah, definitely uh, agree with that. The more people that are taking the technical aspects of Monero and putting it in layman's terms, the better uh, that'll, help more yes. on board more people help them appreciate the privacy features of monero because it is all it is a bit more complicated than just talking about bitcoin um because oh you've got ring signatures or what's ring signatures stealth addresses how does that work uh and yeah. to fully appreciate that you kind of have to understand it but not everybody's going to be able to read the white paper for all these privacy features and then the, the crypto note protocol so that's great uh that's cool that uh Sports betting was kind of a way that you got into crypto. That's that's very interesting. <laughs> well, it's and that's why I I really am focused on usage, right? Um, like like actually needing cryptocurrency, like when you depend on cryptocurrency. That's for me. That's why I got involved with crypto. Now I I have other reasons too. Like I'm interested in geopolitics. Like you know I I'm red pilled, whatever you know. But um. Besides that, though, for me, when I got interested in cryptocurrency, it was because of using it. And that's what I really want to um, emphasize. Yeah, it allows you to actually appreciate it for what it is instead of just using it as something as a means to make money, which, you know, we all want to make money. That would be great. But yeah. if you're someone who got into it for like the actual usability and purpose of it, then it makes you appreciate it much more. Uh, which is cool. Exactly. Uh, so we've got a real user here, a real Monero user, which is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and share. Uh, I'll go ahead and share your tweet. I think this is it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is, uh, so this is, you were going to, I have too. a typo in that, by the way. I, I, I was, I meant to write Attack of the Poison Outputs, but I wrote Attack of the Poison Episodes. And then I was like, ah, screw <laughs> it. I already tweeted it. Embarrassing. But yeah. <laughs> See so what you have two episodes here. Here's the first one. Uh, if you guys yeah. want to go and watch this, here's the uh, the Rumble Odyssey links. You can go to his Twitter account at Zenu Monero, and you can find his post on here. Uh, looks like it's also on. Is that yeah? YouTube link, YouTube Odyssey and Rumble. Uh, so you've got other alternatives. You don't want to use YouTube because YouTube has been making it very hard to use it privately recently. Uh, yeah, there's got two episodes. So the first one here is like the introductory episode. I did watch this one, very nice. Uh, and then you have a second episode that you uploaded just an hour ago. Very nice. Yep. Awesome. How ring signatures work and what poison, I'm guessing it says poison outputs are. Yep. Awesome. So highly recommend this if you want to uh, be able to learn more about how ring signatures work. I mean, like the title says. And what poison outputs are, and that'll also help you by knowing what these things are and also help you avoid those scenarios because there are some things you can do to put yourself in a worse scenario and accidentally bring down your potential anonymity set with the existing ring signatures implementation. And I'm sure you'll get into later episodes of how FCMP++ will basically get rid of that possibility altogether and completely prevent uh, decoy elimination or tracing by decoy elimination. Yeah, correct. Um, you know, the first section of the series is me basically um, pumping up the idea of why we need full chain membership proofs, right? Because um, it's it's a game changer. It it really gets rid of this vulnerability that we currently have. Um, but also to emphasize, though, is how important it is not to use KYC. Um, like poison outputs can only affect you really if you use KYC exchanges. Um, it stands for know your customer. It's um, basically any type of like exchange where you have to give identification. 
you know, you have to take your dorky selfie. Um, though those uh, websites are just collecting all this data on you, and among that is your poison output. So don't use KYC if you're concerned right now and you're basically okay. Uh, long term, though, yes, uh, full chain membership proofs are amazing. It's uh, it's something we've been dreaming about in Monero, <laughs> really, for since since Monero's been created, and uh, yeah, it's it's a game changer. Yeah, FCMP is it's pretty exciting, and Luke Parker's been doing an amazing job. That guy's like, oh genius. yeah, the guy's a genius. heading that development. Oh. Yeah, and of course, um, having to do a little bit of change plans from what was going to be Monero's next hard fork to try and prioritize FCMP further due to the weird kind of some people say it was a black marble attack back in march i guess mm -hmm. we don't totally know what that was yet um so hopefully fcmp will be coming even sooner than it was before still still be a bit of time maybe like a year or so uh these things take time but that's why uh monero is very careful and that's why it's it's not prone to having major privacy like suddenly found privacy exploits or issues like we've seen with some other smaller projects that tend to rush development a little bit, use unproven uh, cryptography. So yeah, got to be careful. But uh, yeah, it's cool that you'll get into the ring signatures, how they work, how to avoid poison outputs. Um, and, you know, of course, in a year's time, this, this stuff will, you don't have to worry that as much. But in the meantime, it's nice to take a little bit of care if you can. And yeah, not using KYC exchange is definitely the biggest way I think you could avoid having poison outputs in the first place, like you mentioned. Uh, but it definitely can be hard for some people as KYC, I'm sure, is still the KYC, to, like centralized exchanges, I'm sure, is still the largest way that people actually get Monero. Uh, and that's going to start in become less and less as time goes on as Monero continues to get delisted from these centralized exchanges. Like Binance doesn't even exist anymore in Binance, uh, which is crazy. Um, ultimately, yeah. that's going to be a good thing. And the Kraken just recently delisted it in all of Europe. Still still exists in the U.S. Uh, so what are, what are your thoughts on that? And how, how would you recommend the average person to get Monero right now? Because... At the moment, it is definitely easy to go ahead and say, okay, just use Kraken. Because if somebody's not experienced, it's definitely going to be harder for them to use something like Havino. And of course, local Monero is not a thing anymore. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, actually, the most common way that, um, you know, looking at darknet markets, the most common way they're getting Monero is by buying either Bitcoin or, in fact, Litecoin um, is as a... Um, uh, onboarding cryptocurrency, and then they use a coin swap service to swap into Monero. Um, this is something that's not talked about in breaking Monero because the concept of like these coin swap services didn't really exist back then. I mean, I think they were available, but they weren't really used as much. Uh, now, though, what you're seeing and what you're seeing, what federal agents are doing is they're observing these uh, coin swap services and they're seeing people going in and going out of them. And um, when you're using a coin swap service, you are giving metadata away, like your IP address or whatever. And that that is something that they are looking at. Um, but anyways, that's that's kind of the, the way people are onboarding. So I really don't view, um, you know, delistings as that big of an issue because most Monero users don't really care about that. <laughs> not, not, not only the, the hardcore you know, conservative types like us, but like the 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 simpletons out there, the the dark net market users who don't care about number go up. They're just using Monero like buying gas for a car, right? They're they're looking at they're just trying to get Monero. So what they're doing is they're buying Bitcoin or Litecoin and then swapping it into Monero. So yeah, I I don't really see too much of an impact um, on Monero as a project as a whole. I mean, obviously it's going to have an, uh, uh, an impact on the price short term. Uh, but even like recently, um, um, I'm sure you guys, uh, uh, saw that with, with the Kraken delisting in 27 different countries had hardly any impact, if anything, like it was very minimal compared to, you know, what we saw with Binance at the beginning of the year. So, 
I, I, I don't really see it as too, too much of a, a difference. And obviously, um, there's other methods as well. We have Haveno, which is growing in usage, um, which is great. Um, and atomic swaps, you know, once we, we start getting pushed towards atomic swaps, I think we'll see the adoption of that grow as well. Yeah, I think I fully agree. And it was very interesting to see the difference between the full Binance delisting uh, in Europe uh, of yeah. Monero and then the Kraken one. And I think it also speaks to some of the shady stuff that Binance was doing, which caused a basically a, f a false sell-off because people couldn't withdraw their XMR. They had to sell. Uh, so that was, I think, the main reason for why the price went down so much compared to Kraken. But yeah, the Kraken one, you know, it didn't really do nearly as much as it did with the Binance one. And I, and I do agree that it's not going to be a huge deal at Monero's on these centralized exchanges more. I think long term, it'll be better for sure. Short term, there'll be some hurt. Um, but long term, I think it'll be better. Uh, and yeah, like people swapping, people buying Litecoin and swapping to Monero. I mean, I can speak to that definitively. Um, looking at well, the if you look at the um, can, uh, on, with Cake Wallet of when there's spikes in trading volume, it's usually people doing mm -hmm. Litecoin and XMR pairs for trading. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the Darknet Market Bible, they literally say use Litecoin. <laughs> Don't buy Bitcoin. <laughs> the transaction fees are too high. They actually yep. hype up Litecoin. Um, and, you know, you mentioned Cake Wallet. Cake Wallet is interesting because it was essentially the first market for Monero, if you really think about it. Like, it was the first coin swap market uh, for Monero. And, I mean, you go on any Darknet um, message board, they're hyping up cake wallet because it's so easy you know you buy whatever you swap it right into monero and then you can spend it and that's what's happening right now so yeah i i don't really think the listings are going to impact too much but you know you're going to have regulations you're going to have other things coming towards monero that will have an impact but if the people need a utility if they need monero right they're going to find a way to get it and that's what's happening this is true and i think the main the main Way, especially as time goes on, is going to further become just getting Litecoin and swapping into Monero uh, until yeah. we get better DEX options uh, like Sarai that are more accessible, basic swap. Um, yep. All these things are coming. They're still um, a little bit in development and they're still harder to get into if you aren't uh, able to get into that stuff, if you're not familiar with the technology um, or just using new software in general. Uh, but yeah, solutions are definitely here and they're coming, which is great to see. And it's cool to see uh, all the advancements that Monero is um, getting in the future. So full chain membership proofs is definitely the biggest one right now that's being focused on and being talked about. Is there any specific new Monero features that's going to be coming in the next hard fork uh, that you're excited about specifically? Yeah, I mean, um, it's going to be nice to have this new address scheme. Um, I haven't really read too much about it, but um, th that that seems really interesting. I know they're going to be updating the view keys as well, so we're going to have um, more options with that. Um, I mean, for me, though, yeah, the, the full chain membership proofs is really what I'm zoning in on. Um, and I think anybody who's advocating for privacy can you know, attest to that. Um, this is really what we've been waiting for since we've had ring signatures. Like every single researcher that or developer that you will talk to in Monero will tell you, yeah, ring signatures need to go. Uh, we've been waiting for this. And this is really like the, the biggest step um, to take. So that's really what I'm mostly focused on. Um, I'm sure we'll have other developments as well. But um, that I'm really focused on. And I guess as well, um, not related to the hard fork is like Sarai coming up and, you know, other decentralized uh, options, uh, because this is really what we need to be focusing on. Um, you know, one thing that's not really talked about is you know, with these coin swap services, they're on the clear net. All right. So I think they, they will eventually be targeted. Um, this is something that Again, not really talked about a lot, but if we're going after these uh, services that are providing cryptocurrency, I, I don't really see why these um, coin swap services wouldn't be targeted if Monero is going through them a lot. So something to keep an eye out on. 
Yeah, that's really kind of the next step, is it? Um, isn't it? Uh, removing, getting Monero yes. removed from the centralized exchanges, and then the next step is to well see what people are doing next, which is buying something that is approved and swapping it to Monero, which is on the centralized swapping services. So the next step, I guess, would be to go after those guys. And yes. that one is definitely a little more of a toss up because not all of them play to the rules that they are necessarily supposed to. Now, most Correct. of them do. Most of them have the KYC AML. They will um, respond to subpoenas, request uh, data requests from law enforcement for IP addresses. They'll probably remove Monero if they are asked to by a court um, or by some new regulation. Uh, but there are certainly some. Uh, and this, there's a lot more options available compared to centralized exchanges that you buy for fiat. There's certainly a lot more that would be less likely to, air quote, follow the rules in the same way uh, in regards to a, a uh, swapping with Monero. Uh, they'd be less likely to remove it. So I think there's more, uh, there'll be more options further down the road, even if these things start to kick off further. But hopefully by that point, we'll have plenty of solid DEX options that are well-developed. Yeah, I mean, we're always going to be moving forward and Monero is not going to go away. So like, I, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm looking at the future, like what what it, what are the feds going to do? Like what what it, what's going to happen? And like, I think pretty obviously they're going to go after CoinSwap services and also like, um, you know, websites like CoinCards, like why wouldn't they pressure them? You know, is CoinCards going to like say F you to the government? I don't think so, you know, but that that's down the line and it's also questionable even if we're going to get to that point right um you know i think once you know if, if monero does go up in price you're suddenly going to have a lot of people lobbying for it and that changes the game completely you know really that's how our governments runs by lobbyism right so if that does happen then this entire conversation is irrelevant <laughs> right so i don't know yeah, and I mean that's like the same thing goes for cake pay. I mean, it's already yeah. hard enough. Like doing what we're doing, selling these gift cards um, for Monero with basically no KYC on our side. That that responsibility is on the card provider side. That's already hard enough. Um, that's that's very hard to do from a legal standpoint. And there's been uh, we've we've had tons of threats of having our account shut down because somebody was able to buy a card who was OFAC sanctioned or whatever, which wasn't even entirely our fault. Um, so if if it came to that, then yeah, we would we'd simply have to shut the service down if uh, we were required to. Um, but yeah, it, it, the question is, will it even get to that? And uh, I think Monero has had a great network effect um at least since i got into it i think it's been growing incredibly well and i i keep seeing new and new especially larger uh types of individuals like more people with bigger online presences start to talk and notice about monero and i think this network effect will only kick off even further as time goes on and more and more people wake up and realize that wow bitcoin is just it's kind of worse than using a credit card in a lot of ways uh and well we yeah privacy so for our transactions yeah, no, 100%. And what I would say is that right now Monero is in what I would call the clout building stage. Like Monero is just building clout. Like it's like even if you don't hold Monero, you respect it. You put respect on the name, right? Like, oh shit, criminals are using it on darknet markets. Like, damn, like that that's some real shit, right? And that that's what's happening right now. And over time it will get noticed by more and more people, but if they if they're, if they're not um, noticing it, then like whatever, it's, it's you know, that's just uh, their their fault. But anybody who is aware of privacy knows about Monero. I mean, even even the attacks against Monero uh, brings attention to it, and then people look into it and they see what it really is. Uh, so. In terms of actually getting Monero, is there is there like a so I guess I guess what you said before you would recommend to the average person, uh, let's say let's say newbie crypto newbie they wanted to get their hands on some Monero, what would you say to that person? Would it be to 
get some to buy some because obviously the hardest part and this is this is going to be the hardest part to solve for quite a long time is that fiat to crypto on ramp now there's ways around this uh going forward like people being able to get paid for services in crypto like monero people being able to get paid for their for their job in crypto like monero uh but if the average if there's some new person who's just they're in their fiat world and they have a regular job. What would you say to that person if they wanted to be able to get some Monero, if they wanted to get into that ecosystem? Yeah, I mean, I would just say buy some Litecoin on a KYC exchange and swap it into Monero. I mean, if it's a, if they're a newbie, like that, that's easy to do, and they'll be able to do it. Um, I, you know, obviously KYC exchanges I don't like, but um, from the perspective of somebody being onboarded, that's the easiest way, and it's. Like if you swap into Monero, then you're good, right? So that that's all they have to really be focused on. Um, like I, I would not send a newbie over to use Haveno. Like that's going to be way too complicated for them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I mean Haveno is yeah. really cool. Don't get me wrong, but I do see yeah, a lot of exactly. people saying how yeah. it's like the ultimate solution, and I'm like, well, it's still fairly complicated for a new person. Um, it still has a ways to go. Now the only concern I have, and this is why personally I recommend people. At right now, as they still can, this is this is becoming harder depending on where you live. But in the U.S., I recommend people to just use Kraken to buy Monero directly. And the reason for that is is because there's some potential concerns about. So let's say use the central exchange to buy Litecoin, Bitcoin. Um, just swapping those into Monero, uh, it's probably okay. Especially now, ironically, it makes it better for how much they're tracking the swap services uh but i've seen some cases especially in the past where uh bitcoin or litecoin or any traceable asset becomes a future liability just by having it just by just by taking it off the exchange and using it in any way becomes a future liability because if somebody does something with those coins and they want to tie it to somebody and the only person they can tie it to is you well you might get wrapped up into something uh now Swapping immediately, swapping it to Monero from the exchange directly is probably a pretty surefire way to ensure that. Well, yeah, you got rid of it; you had nothing to do with it. Uh, but that's just kind of a concern that I can think of when uh, having Bitcoin or Litecoin just and just then swapping it because then it goes into somebody else's hands and you don't know where it ends up. Uh, the chances of you getting in trouble for something somebody did after immediately swapping it to something else. I think it's, I think it'd be pretty easy to prove that you immediately swapped it to something like Monero, but definitely uh, if, if Kraken removes Monero, then I guess that'd be the only way going forward that you could do it anyway uh, to get Monero is to swap from Litecoin or Bitcoin. Yeah. I mean, I, I have nothing against Kraken necessarily. I mean, it's a KOIC exchange. Like they're going to bend the knee of the government. If the government, Ask them to bend the knee. <laughs> That's simple as that. Um, yeah, timing analysis, though, is a problem where, uh, in, in fact, uh, the government and chain analysis has tools where they can actually visualize different cryptocurrencies in, in, the, in the current time. And they can see, okay, you sent $120 worth of Bitcoin to this exchange. Um, that probably went to $120 worth of Monero. And so they can like, I guess, like see the amounts going, right? Um, obviously with Monero, it's a lot harder because everything's encrypted. But if you send like exact amounts, all they have to do is subtract the transaction fee and they can see that exact amount. So then later on, if you send that exact amount of Monero, you know, especially immediately after to somebody, then there's like a connection there, right? So it's it's not like a silver bullet um, in, in some ways, but it's something that, you know, whenever you're using KYC, you're kind of leaking metadata like that, right? Yeah, I think the general's the general mostly true statement is that once it's into Monero, it's pretty much good to go. As long as yeah. you keep it there. If you're if you're doing this in and out, then that's very poor. Uh you have to keep this it is there. actually why Zcash is so terrible, is because they <laughs> like when you're jumping in and out of like the, the Z outputs, um you're you're like actually revealing yourself because nobody uses Zcash. And once you jump into Zcash's uh shielded addresses and then then you jump out, 
you're just showing that you're transferring that exact amount. And most people who are using Zcash are not, you know, understanding this. Just like most people who are using Monero, they're they're not aware of these attacks, which is why Monero has to like constantly be approving to protect the idiots who are using it, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, we've definitely seen cases of criminals doing just exactly that and then getting found yeah. out where they took a bunch of Bitcoin that they were able to ransom from somebody or steal. They basically just pipe it through Monero, take it right back out, sometimes using the same exchange, the same swap service uh, within the oh, same yeah. day. And it's extremely obvious. So Monero is, like you said, it's not a silver bullet. FCMP will make it much better on the actual protocol level uh, and the blockchain preventing tracing on it itself uh, through eliminating decoys from the ring signatures. But if you're going to be putting an exact amount in, taking an exact amount out on the same swap service, that's going to raise some eyebrows. So you still have to be careful of how you use Monero when you're going in and out. But keeping Monero in and keeping like putting Litecoin, Bitcoin into Monero, keeping it there, using it in Monero is pretty good. Yeah, and you talk about criminals, and uh, recently, um, some people listening might not know about this. There was a, a darknet market administrator uh, who owned this darknet market called Incognito, and uh, he was actually a uh, Monero user. Um, you can go to his Twitter page. He talked about Monero all the time. He actually even went to, uh, I believe, St. Lucia? Um, and he went to some like like uh, island country, and he... Um, he like gave a demonstration about OPSEC and chain analysis. And this guy was operating a darknet market using Monero and his OPSEC with Monero was terrible. It was really bad. Um, and so like this guy who is this quote unquote expert who's on Twitter, he had all these followers and uh, he had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> like, um, so yeah, don't fall for this meme that just because it's on a darknet market, everyone there is a genius. No, the average person on darknet markets is like a 20 year old, 30 year old something who wants to get high. They, they, don't, they don't know anything. All, all they do is they go on the internet and they read, oh, I need to use Monero. Okay, that's it. That's it, right? So to to find these people, it's or to um to trace them, it's actually relatively easy if they're being targeted. And so yes, Monero needs to just continue improving in all these different ways, so idiots can use it without knowing how to use it. I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Uh, I think we got a few. Super chats here, just looking. Uh, Nihilus tipped dollar twenty two. Monero getting delisted from centralized exchanges is literally a buy it cheap signal. It can't be stopped thanks to DEXs anyway. Thanks financial regulators for helping me get some cheap Monero each time. This is this is probably hopefully true. I think it will be true. Uh, Heidi tipped fifty cents. Regulations can go pull on my grandma's something. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Larry Hines to 20 cents. China recently successfully decrypted an encryption scheme using a quantum computer. How hard will it be to develop transaction proof against quantum? That is a question for Luke Parker, my friend. You should uh, you should ask him that. I'm sure he could he could uh, talk talk your ear off for a couple hours uh, about that for sure. Definitely not something I can answer. Uh, so that being said, Zeno, uh, anything else you want to mention? Throw out there. Talk about. Uh, and then I guess next we can jump into the rating the meme uh, the memes for the meme competition. Nah, I, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can follow me at Zeno Monero at Twitter, and I have a YouTube account, uh, Anti Moon Boy. I guess is is what I what I'm going by. I just made that up. Um, yeah, I mean uh, just follow along. I'm going to be dropping videos every other day, so the next video is going to be on Monday. And uh, yeah, if you want to learn about Monero and how it can be attacked. And uh, that that tickles your fancy. Uh, yes, you can subscribe. I, I don't like asking people to su subscribe. It's very cringy. Uh, but yeah, you can follow along. <laughs> like and subscribe, and, uh, guys. Yeah, no, I... Oh, man, I, like, looked up on, like, YouTube, like, the advice for new, like, YouTubers, and I, like, died of cringe. I was like, all right, I can't. I can't <laughs> fucking do that. Um, no, but you know, if, if you want to follow along, I guarantee you're going to learn something. 
um, because uh, Monero is a, is a fascinating project and we have all this new usage that's happening with it. So there's a lot of stories and I'm gonna be covering that, so.